Today I'm going to focus on our gospel reading from John chapter 3, Jesus speaking with Nicodemus. Nicodemus was a Pharisee and a member of the Sanhedrin, a ruling council in Jerusalem. He was a senior figure that came to speak to Jesus at night. And Jesus says to Nicodemus these words, you must be born again. That's a really loaded phrase for many these days. All sorts of images and associations are conjured up when you say to somebody, born again. We need to see past all of that, though, to what Jesus was communicating, what he was telling Nicodemus and what his words say to us through the pages of Scripture. God's saving work involves a rebirth, a new birth, remade, recreated, regenerate. So I'm going to focus on this phrase of Jesus that we find in verses three and seven. You must be born again. I'm going to focus on receiving that message personally, sharing that message with others and being a community, a church, a living manifestation of new life where others come to new birth. New birth results in new life. Nicodemus was a religious man, but Jesus brought a change. It was a real revelation. The, the, the worship of God was around the law that Sir Nicodemus knew, but now Jesus is saying it involves a spiritual birth. It's totally different. The fulfilment of the promises from Joel, of the God's spirit being poured out on all of his people, which we celebrated last week with Pentecost. It's a big change. You see, so much religion of Jesus' time had become outward observance and ritual without an inner reality behind it. Jesus spoke to some religious leaders of the time very bluntly about this in Mark chapter 7. He said this, Isaiah was right when he prophesied about you hypocrites. As it is written, these people honour me with their lips but their hearts are far from me. They worship me in vain. Their teachings are merely human rules. You have let go of the commands of God and are holding on to human traditions. That same danger and problem that was manifest in, in a religion of Jesus's time is there for every church in every generation and ours. It's a danger for me and you that we can get into external observance of our faith without the inner reality being there in the way it should. We're not called to be religious. We're called to be born again, born of the Spirit. Some may find the question, are you born again, threatening. But why should that be so? If I tell someone that I'm born again, as I am, it actually doesn't say very much about me. It says a whole lot about God, his grace, his love and forgiveness. It shows how wonderful he is. When Jesus comes into our lives by his spirit, a new birth happens, a new life grows. Jesus said to Nicodemus, and the message comes to us, you must be born again, born from above, born of the Spirit. Whether we are cradle Christians, you know, we can't remember a time when we didn't have faith in Jesus Christ, or we're later converts, or we're not there yet. The message is the same. You must be born again, born of the Spirit. So we've considered the personal experience of being born again. But how about the second thing I want to say, which is could you share with someone else what that message is about, about being born again? St Peter in his first epistle writes this, always be prepared to give an answer to everyone who asks you to give the reason for the hope you have, but do this with gentleness and respect. Always be prepared to give an answer. Can we communicate this? What can we share with someone? The message that Jesus is giving in John chapter 3. 
at the back of church, we have booklets by Nicky Gumbel and Jay John, to name but two. But Nicky Gumbel, there's a little booklet called Why Jesus? It's a very basic introduction to the heart of the Christian message, the gospel. And there are various titles by J. John, who is an evangelist, who does, uh, who shares the same way. These books are very good to give out to people on occasions when it's appropriate, but they're also very good as a way of informing us and helping us see how we might share the Christian message. They are clear and they're concise and they focus on the essentials. Now, we're not all evangelists. I'm not. But we are all witnesses. Witnesses to God's work in us. Witnesses to the message that we've received. And witness to the experience of new life and new birth we see in others in, in the Christian faith as well. We are called to be witnesses. Always be prepared to give an answer to everyone who asks you to give the reason for the hope you have, but do this with gentleness and respect. So can I encourage you to perhaps get one of those booklets or take a moment to reflect. If someone asked you what going to church and following Jesus was all about, how could you communicate? Could you communicate what new birth and new life in Jesus is? So lastly, I want to speak about being a community, a church, living that new life together and being a place where others can come to new birth through Jesus Christ. This part of my message is really about the situation we're in right now. As I have been reflecting on coming to the end of COVID restrictions and looking forward to it, the key word that's been in my mind and on my heart is this, rebuild or rebuilding. Other words could have been there, couldn't they? I, it could have been the word on my heart and mind could have been resume, resume stuff or even recover. Well, recovery, no doubt, will need to happen. You know, all that we've been through in every aspect of our life as well as church life. But the primary focus will be rebuild. If we focused actually on recovery, my feeling is there's a bit of a danger within that. The danger is that we start to focus too much on ourselves. There's some buzzwords around at the moment in church circles big time and out there that I come across. Uh, I'm going to share three of them with you. Now, the thing about these words is they are all really good, but I I started to find I'm reacting negatively often when I hear them. The words are these, well-being, thriving and flourishing. Now, they're good words, aren't they? But within my hearing, they're being increasingly used in a sort of self-focused way, even a self-indulgent way, as if these things are ends in themselves, whereas they're not really. Flourishing, well-being and thriving should be the, what people are so that we can serve, so that we can worship, that we can be and live the mission that God's given each one of us in this life. Flourishing, well-being and thriving are not ends in themselves. I'm a bit of a reactionary. I've probably got to do a bit of repenting because I start sort of cringing inwardly when somebody goes on about flourishing these days. God help me. Anyway, rebuild is the focus uh, for this coming season. And we really will be. Some, some aspects of church life will be back to basics and starting from the bottom up again. Um, that's just how it's going to be. And that might be a good thing. Rebuild for the glory of God so that we can reach out in Jesus's name. That will do as much for our sense of well-being as any period of spiritual convalescence. Rebuild. And in rebuilding, grasping the promise of Jesus, which uh, is part of our vision statement and is, is also referred to in the APCM. Jesus said this in Matthew 16, 18, I will build my church and the gates of Hades, or you might insert and COVID, COVID rather, will not prevail against it. 
So will you pray with me for our churches in these coming weeks as we get closer to the end of June and to resumption, hopefully, of more normal worship in July? Um, will you pray with me for our churches uh, on your own? If you're in a fellowship group with your fellowship group, it doesn't matter where, but please pray for what comes next, that we will rebuild our church with a focus on living the new life that we have through new birth and bringing others to new birth through Jesus and for his name's sake. So I've spoken about receiving the message you must be born again personally, sharing its message with others and living it as a church and rebuilding for the glory of God in the season before us. Let us pray. Heavenly Father, we want to thank you for what's revealed in this encounter between Jesus and Nicodemus in John chapter 3. And in particular, Father, we thank you for new birth. Father, we ask and pray that you would enable us to be people who are confident of our place in you through being born again, who are able to communicate or at least witness to that with others we encounter, ready to give a reason for the hope we have. And Father, enable us in this new season, post-COVID restrictions, to live this new life to the full and to be a place where people come and new birth happens in and through Jesus Christ. We ask in his name. Amen.